Cyber Insiders. Untold stories from behind the cyber front line. Hi, and welcome to Cyber Insiders, the podcast where we look at what it's really like to be on the front line of cybersecurity. I'm Dominique Adams, your podcast host and communications lead at Atzarma, one of the UK's leading managed security service providers. And today I'm going to be talking to Kian Heasley, who is threat lead at Atzarma, about hacker group Scattered Spider, who are believed to be behind the recent attack on global retailer Marks & Spencer. By the end of this episode, you'll understand who is behind Scattered Spider, their evolution as a threat actor, their tactics, techniques and procedures, and importantly, how to defend against them. So, hi Kian and welcome to the podcast. Lovely to be here. So, who or what are Scattered Spider and how did they first come onto the radar of the security community? So, in I think early 2022, Scattered Spider were, uh, and they still are, a very loosely knit uh, collective of hackers. I think maybe 10, 15 years ago, they might have been members of Anonymous uh, doing de defacements of websites for political reasons. Uh, now that there's a lot of money to be made in cybercrime, these uh, younger kids, you know, in their teens and their early 20s, are more interested in making sure that they, they get some sort of uh, remuneration for their, their criminal activities. So they were originally involved in hacking of uh, telecom firms. So they would get access to customer databases, and then they would use that to do cryptocurrency fraud, for instance. They would get access to Bitcoin wallets or uh, people's uh, online banking via this access that they had to um, to telecom firms in the US mostly, so Verizon, AT&T, companies like that. So what do we know about the group's affiliations? Like, Who do they work with? Who are their collaborators or their um, co-conspirators? There's two different ways of looking at the affiliations of Scattered Spider. One is within the group itself. So there's different parts of the group that might specialize in certain techniques or certain criminal activities. So uh, sim swapping is one. So essentially taking over the phone number of a victim, and then you can receive SMS, MFA, or make phone calls or send text messages as that person. Another part of the group might be good at uh, getting uh, initial access to a system. So getting onto a system and then putting on malware, whatever else. But then they also have their external connections. So they've previously partnered with uh, ransomware groups, Russian ransomware groups like Black Cat or Killin or more recently Dragon Force. So they'll partner with, with ransomware groups. They'll get the initial access. They'll, they'll go on, they'll steal data. And then at the end, they'll, they'll detonate ransomware. And they'll, uh, in that way, they'll then earn money through that affiliate program with whatever ransomware group they partnered with. So you mentioned, you touched briefly on what kind of sectors they've been targeting, but, you know, what are their most frequent targeted sectors and organizations and kind of what are their motivations really? And also how has that evolved since their first inception? So it's interesting to think about, um, these are, are younger hackers. So I think Part of the, the way that they choose their targets is these are high profile targets. So part of it is for clout. They want renown, maybe within their own community or outside the community. They want people to know that, you know, they hacked casinos or they hacked large telephone companies or they hacked Uber or, you know, th these are targets that are chosen, I guess, because they have a lot of money to spend as well. So they can attempt to, to uh, exploit the data that they've stolen and, and essentially blackmail those companies. But I think also there is a certain amount of choosing of, of companies based on their, their profiles. So they're not going after smaller companies or companies that are, that are large, but maybe you know, don't have a high uh, profile in the media or in pop culture. They're going after casinos, they're going after large retailers, they're going after companies that, that people will have heard of. So you kind of, again, you've already slightly touched on their tools they're using, but can you just expand a bit on that and tell us more about their tools, techniques and procedures? So initial access for them, a lot of time it will be social engineering, which sometimes called voice phishing, which is a term I really hate. But they will call up a help desk for a company and they'll say, hey, I'm Steve from accounting. I don't really understand how the VPN works, but I'm locked out and I've got a presentation I need to, to get in for tomorrow. It would be a huge amount of trouble if I don't do it. The other option is that they will call up an employee. So they'll, they'll figure out an employee that has the access that they need. And they'll call that employee and say, hey, this is Steve from the IT help desk. We need you to enter some stuff into your phone because we've noticed that there's some problems with your account. Can you give us the code that you got from your phone? Okay, perfect. Well, everything's fixed now. And then that, that employee's credentials have been compromised. They're, they're to a MFA, whichever else. So those are the, the two primary ways that we've seen them entering targeted networks in the past. And then from there, they will they will move very quickly. So in the case of, I think it was MGM Casino back in 2023, an employee had his password reset and got an email telling him it had been reset. He contacted the help desk, I think a few minutes later to tell them that he hadn't requested a password reset. By then, Scattered Spider had already managed to use his account to gain access to 
a higher privilege account and from there, you know, take over control of, of certain aspects of the network. So they move extremely quickly once they get access. Once they get access as well, they're using a lot of open source tools or off the shelf. So they use legitimate remote access management tools like uh, AnyDesk. They use the kind of tools that, that anyone could download from GitHub or GitLab. Uh, they're not using bespoke tools or malware or anything else in general, right up until the point of if they're doing ransomware, then they're using ransomware that they have entered into an affiliate program with. So they're not having to build that or, or maintain it. They're actually off sourcing that to a a third party essentially. Wow, they sound pretty sneaky and pretty quick. So if you get targeted, you have to move quite fast, right? So my next question would be, you've kind of you've outlined very clearly the dangers, the risks and the, you know, the the hallmarks of a scattered spider attack. But how should organizations adapt their security strategy to better defend against groups like this? So the primary way that I see uh, companies need to to um, engage in training of their employees and it's I think a lot of companies do phishing training for, for email phishing. Email phishing is becoming less and less of a vector for cybercrime. I think as phishing controls get better, as training becomes better for people, it needs to be training of the people who deal with help desk requests. So they need to make sure that they are verifying the identity of anyone that they are speaking with, that there's a robust process in place to verify identity. So not just that they're you know asking a few random questions, but that there's a, a process in place that will confirm it on some level the person that they're speaking with. Um, and then also employees need to be aware that, you know, they may be contacted by people posing as as a help desk or IT support that will sound very convincing. And that's part of the the way that Scattered Spider has been so successful is that it's primarily made up of people who are believed to live in America, Europe, Canada, Western countries. So they don't have the, the issues that Russian groups might have where, you know, they have accents that are, are a bit of a giveaway or they might not understand slang. And a lot of these these kids have also had some experience in IT themselves, so they would know the kind of lingo, the, the kind of uh, terminology that people would use when requesting password resets or, or uh, flagging issues with IT. So they're relying on on uh, trust. They're relying on people to to sort of just go along and say, okay, well, you know, this is someone from my company. I really need to help them out in a, in a difficult situation. Uh, other than that, companies need to think about their their infrastructure. So their virtual machine infrastructure, hypervisor, all of that, the security around that, keeping things up to date, and also making sure that um, it's not easy for a group like Scatter Spider to compromise one or two accounts and then gain massive amounts of privilege. So you want to have your user accounts separate from your administrative accounts. You don't want to have one or two admins who have the keys to your entire kingdom, because if one of those is unlucky enough to be compromised, then Scatter Spider or, or a group similar to them essentially have a free pass to, to go through your network and make any changes and grab any data that they want. So say the worst case scenario has happened and Scattered Spider in, and you've mentioned that they move very fast. What can an organization do in terms of incident response? So I think the, the, the thing that you would want to do immediately is cut off outside access. Um, that's something that I believe that we've seen with MNS. A lot of their VPN infrastructure seems to be down. Uh, you want to make sure that um, if there is a threat actor within your network that you can cut off their their access to continue you know pursuing whatever goals they have you want to look for uh, remote access management tool um, connections like i said any desk team viewer things like that you want to look for uh, c2 infrastructure but i think ultimately you know your best option might be just to pull the plug on the network and start shutting things down until you can you can do a remediation and get a, either your own internal ir team or a third party to come in and do an investigation and i think that's what we've seen with mns that They've gradually been taking parts of their their network offline while they do investigations and try and you know ascertain, I guess, what the extent of any compromise has been. And so I know you and your team have been closely following Scattered Spider's recent attack on MS, and I know you guys have been very proactive in your response to kind of support our customers and to allay their fears. Can you tell me some of the things you guys have been up to, what you've done, and how you're supporting them in that sense? In terms of supporting our customers, we already have a large amount of data on Scattered Spider within our Threat Intel platform. We followed you know, their, their exploits over the last, I guess, three years now. Um, their ups and downs, obviously, there were some arrests last year, some arrests here in Scotland, actually, last year. So it shows that they really do have a, a reach throughout Europe and, and America. And we've been uh, collating recent reports. We've been collating IOCs making sure that those are sent out to our, our customers' team and EDR solutions. But also we've been looking at creating threat hunting and detection content that matches with the, the latest TTPs that we're seeing, not just in, in the, uh, the reports we've seen in the, the media about uh, MNS, but also in you know more recent uh, reports that have been released about Scattered Spider in general. So 
uh, we are we're basically pursuing all angles here to make sure that we have the, the best picture of what, what they're up to, what the capabilities are recently, and also that we're, we're passing along that knowledge within our own company, but also to our customers. So obviously the reason we're talking about Scattered Spider today is because of their recent high profile attack on m and And I'm just wondering, although nothing's been really officially you know, there's no official sort of statement on what's going on, but I would love to know what what is being reported widely and can you just set the scene and let us know a little bit of detail about what Scattered Spider has done and how that's impacted m &S. So as you say, this is all based on anonymous sources and, you know, talking to the media, uh, but it does fit with what I would have expected. I think last week I, I thought myself that this would be a group similar to Scattered Spider uh, based on everything that we know so far based on um, MS themselves, who they are, um, it just makes sense. Uh, my team have been following developments since Tuesday last week when MS first announced that there had been a breach. Um, and since then, you know, we've been speculating amongst ourselves. We've been trying to put together what, what we've been able to find out. And we've released a, a advisory to our customers based on, you know, what's been reported in the media, based on our own gut feelings about, you know, what, what we're seeing. And based on what we know about Scattered Spider already, we created some uh, proactive threat hunting based on, on details that were in those reports. And uh, we're, as I said before, we're, we're collating all of the information that we, we already have about Scattered Spider, but also recent reporting outside of MNS. So we're looking at uh, recent activity, recent industry reporting about them, going back even to, to reports from 2023 and onwards, just to, to get a full picture of what we think, you know, their, the TTPs might be now, how they responded to arrests within their group. So there have been, you know, a number of high profile arrests and also just to, to try and work out what we think their uh, attack path might have been within MNS, what TTPs they might have used while they were inside their network. The reporting so far is that in February, uh, it seems that Scattered Spider were able to gain access to a domain controller within MNS. They're able to get a copy of a file called ntds.dit, which contains a lot of information about active directory domains. It also contains credentials, usernames, all of that stuff. So they were able to get a copy of that. In the past, Scattered Spider have done this by uh, creating a shadow copy and then extracting from that shadow copy. So basically trying to circumvent uh, some of the ways that it might be detected that they'd access that file, accessing it from that, that shadow copy backup instead of directly. Um, from there, it seems that they've sort of laid low. They probably done some lateral movement throughout the network. They probably gained administrative privileges. And then over the Easter weekend, it appears that that is when they decided when, you know, a lot of staff would be away, which once again is a, a classic tactic of better organized hacking groups that they detonated the Dragon Force ransomware on, um, the ESXi infrastructure. So the virtual machine infrastructure of uh, probably others uh, parts as well of, of, uh, Marks and Spencer's. So that's, that's the, the reporting that we have in the media. Um, obviously nothing, as you say, is confirmed by MNS themselves, but it does make sense to me from an outside perspective and from what I've seen discussed by other security researchers that, you know, certain parts of their network have been offline, certain parts of their, the functionality of their business is offline, that this fits with that sort of data exfiltration probably and ransomware detonation of some kind, and then a long remediation process, which I think is on probably day 10 or 11 at the time of recording. Although well, that's very thorough. <laughs> Okay, well, I feel like I've learned a lot more about who Scattered Spider are, what they do, their tactics, and what's going on with m &S, who we wish a very speedy recovery. Yeah. So thank you so much for joining me today and giving me the lowdown. No problem at all. Thank you very much. To our listeners, thanks for joining us and we hope you enjoyed this episode. If you're concerned about Scattered Spider, or you'd like to learn more about Adharma and how we help organizations fortify their cyber resilience, please get in touch at hello at adharma.com or you can visit our website www.adharma.com until next time take care of yourself cyber insiders from adharma follow and rate on your podcast app together we've got this